I want to talk about something that is a tool that I think goes below the surface of diversity. And we started the morning with diversity, we're going to end with looking at diversity. That's how I interpreted the theme, mix it up. I think fundamentally we're afraid of other people. We say that we're not because we're adults and we should, you know, be able to interact with other people. But in fact, we are afraid to have open presence for other people in our lives and have them relate to us in a significant way. I want to do this by telling a couple of stories and I want to involve you in a safe way, in a way that I think we can get to the heart of diversity. My older daughter is now 21 and Tess is 10 because every 11 years I give birth whether I really need to or not. <laughs> And since Tess is 10, next year's my year. <laughs> and that will be a major medical miracle. <laughs> I actually wear more clothes than I need on stage because I'm in that lovely time that we call menopause, and um, I have to be able to take something off, so don't fear if I start taking clothing off. <laughs> Before I realized to wear more clothing than I needed, it was rather frightening for audiences because I would tear up my clothes and have nothing to take off. So, so anyway, uh, Emma, my oldest, was uh, six years old and she loved Spider-Man. Spider-Man was her hero. She wore Spider-Man pajamas. She wanted to be Spider-Man for Halloween. She couldn't get enough of Spider-Man. She had a little cubicle uh, locker at school and she pasted these pictures of Spider-Man all in it. She came out of school one day in tears and she had these little crumpled up pieces of paper with the Spider-Man posters on them. And I said, honey, what's wrong? She said, Matthew told me that I can't like Spider-Man because only boys can like Spider-Man. And I said to myself, where's Matthew? <laughs> let's, let's, let's have a little sit down with Matthew. But what was really interesting about it was that I stopped doing the work that I was doing because of that event. I was doing really traditional diversity training in organizations, going in, working with adult people in teams to look at diversity issues, and I thought, my God, why am I wasting my time and their time when we get these messages so young in life about what boys do, girls do, all kinds of different minority groups and other groups. We get all these messages, and I am wasting my life doing this work. I need to focus on kids and on my daughter. When Emma was a little bit younger than that, at the age when whatever a kid is thinking, they say it, like really loudly. So we were in the grocery store and I knew in a flash that she had hit pay dirt because there was a man in a wheelchair with no legs. She started running toward me so excited and she said, Mama, Mama, there's a man with no legs. And what did I say to her, do you think? It was not news to that man that he had no legs. <laughs> I feel fairly certain that he knew he had no legs. <laughs> what I realized in that moment is that often what we do is we mistake noticing difference for making a judgment. So if I, make, if I notice difference, somehow there's a judgment implied in that. And I think we need to go beyond that, to go to a more core human place around how we interact with other people. I was interested in LaShonda's talk today about the quilt because she showed the photograph from 1911. And 98 years later, I got a call from an HR director, 2009, saying, Patty, we've got some problems. I want to know if you can help. I said, well, what's the problem? He said, we have white employees putting nooses on black employees' lockers. I said, well, what did you have in mind? And again, my work was changed because what he said to me was, well, I, I think maybe a, a one or a two hour training program. Wow, if I could do that in one or two hours, that would be fabulous. I would never sleep. I would just walk around doing that work. <laughs> but what I realized in that moment was, 
that I had committed myself to doing that kind of insignificant work in the world, and many people had. We were looking at diversity on a very superficial level. We weren't getting beyond the interactions of people. We were looking at who I am and who you are, but not what's the quality of engagement between us. We weren't looking at the space between us and trying to narrow that. And there are a couple things I know for sure, that the shorter that distance is between me and you, and the richer the quality of that engagement, the healthier we are, the healthier our planet is, our world is. And the shortest distance between two people is a story. It's the capacity for me to know your story and for you to know my story. Because what happens when we tell our stories is you become not a what, but a who to me. And once you are a who to me, I can't go back to seeing you as a what, as a category as a stereotype. I would love to invite you to help me out with something. Um, if you would, raise the house lights, and I'd like to have everybody stand who is able to stand. I know it's the last thing in the day. Let's have a little more energy. What I would like for you to do is I'm going to take language away from you, because what we do with language is we deflect our difficulty, our embarrassment, our you know, wanting to move away from something. So I'm going to take language away from you. And silently, I want you to find a partner that you can, in the configuration we're in, stand in front of face to face. So I'll give you a moment to do that. I see that. Um, I see that taking a language away from you really worked well. <laughs> so here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to have uh, silence in the room. And I'm not going to leave you in this very long because I know it's uncomfortable, but I think it's at the heart of what we need to do in terms of mixing it up. What I want you to do is simply, silently, be present with this person in front of you for just a, a bit. Just be present with this person in front of you for a moment. It is really important that you continue to breathe <laughs> during this exercise. And I just want you to notice what you notice. There's no judgment. The judgment that we place on ourselves about, oh, I'm really feeling awkward, or this is really hard for me, or I'm an idiot because I can't do this, that judgment keeps us from learning, so let it go. Notice what your body is doing. Is your face tight? Just let it go. Shake out your arms and legs and be present just for a moment. <laughs> we talk about diversity a lot, and yet at the core of it is the relationship of people together, and it's really very difficult for us, isn't it? Close your eyes, if you would. I'm going to lead you through a couple of memories. I developed this exercise, this learning um, practice, a couple of years ago with a colleague, and I want to take you through it really quickly, if I can. I want you to remember a couple of memories. I'm going to lead you through it. Keep your eyes closed throughout. And I want you to remember these memories as physically as you can, not just mentally. I think we, we talk about diversity and mixing it up in our heads, but I want you to feel it physically. And the first thing I want you to remember is a favorite childhood game. What did you love to play as a child? What were the pieces? Where did you play it? Who was involved? How did it feel to win? Your favorite childhood game. Let that memory go. Keep your eyes closed. Remember a sanctuary, a place that you feel safe, or as a child that you would go to be away from everybody, to feel safe a sanctuary. Keep your eyes closed. Let that memory go. I want you to remember your first love. How did that make you feel? What were the circumstances of that? Where did you feel that? How did it sound? Your first love. Keep your eyes closed, let that memory go. You're doing great work, we have two more. A moment 
of great loss in your life? Where did you feel that in your body? How did that show up for you, a moment of great loss? Let that memory go. And the last one, a moment of potent learning. A moment of potent learning. Without speaking, I want you to open your eyes and look at the partner that you had before we did that. I want you to acknowledge that this person in front of you has as deeply held a set of memories and stories that make up the texture of their life as do you. Maybe it feels differently to look at them after having gone through that. But I also want you to remember this, that every single person you meet has as deeply textured a set of stories that are meaningful to them in ways we can never know. Every single person, the homeless person in the square, the CEO, the janitor, the middle manager, the speaker who has menopause. <laughs> Every single person has these deeply meaningful stories. And you know what our job is? Our job is to walk toward those instead of away from them. Thank you very much.